Hello, everyone, and welcome to Keeping Score with Dylan and Jack, a podcast show dedicated to bringing analysis of Rutgers sports and sports around the country. I'm Dylan. And I'm Jack. And today we're joined by men's basketball beat writer and future head sports editor of the Daily Targum, Ellis Gordon. What's up, guys? Glad to be here again. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about Rutgers men's basketball, their early start to the season. Then we'll go into some NFL coverage later on. We'll introduce another guest. We'll, we'll keep that a secret till he comes on. But first, obviously, Pete, Pete by the way, the TV. Like we got, to, we got to finally got up and working. We are a classy organization yeah. here, guys. You know, uh, obviously we got the backdrop, we got the TV, but you know, next we got to talk about Rutgers men's basketball in the least surprising top ten upset I think in the history of college basketball. Rutgers once again dominates the Indiana Hoosiers, uh, as our headline says on our website, Hoosier Daddy, because Rutgers now six wins in a row over Indiana, and I mean, you know, eight of the last nine. You could say it's Tracy Mike's arena, but they beat them at Assembly Hall. You know, it's Trace Jackson Davis. You know, just a bunch of crazy stuff. Cliff and Mori played three minutes in the first half, and they won by 20. You know, uh, ultimately, just, just a lot of big keys to that game. Ellis and Jack, obviously, we all watched the game, but you guys are kind of experts. Jack, you are men's beat writer last year. Ellis, you are men's beat writer now. So That's two years, yeah. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on the game. You know, any anything else you take away from it? It was a, it was a classic Rutgers win. Uh, gritty. Gutsy performances from some unsung heroes. Well, they were they were sung after the game, but prior to the game, unsung heroes, and just out rebounding them. They stole the will of Indiana. That's simply how the game went down because it wasn't like Rutgers really shot well the ball. They didn't really play good offense, but they on the glass they were great. They stole the will of Indiana when the game was close. In came Derek Simpson for his first signature moment. As a Rutgers Scarlet Knight, 10 was, run, and it, was a, it wasn't just a run. It was a flashy run. Step back mid-range. Bang. Deep three-point shot. Cash it in. Finally, the little, I don't even know what you call like I don't even know what you call that. A little scoop over the center. Midway scoop. I don't even know what you call that. Jelly. But, je- no, because it wasn't jelly because he didn't put the right spin. But uh. it, was like, it was like a scooped layup over the center, over the point guard. And that was, uh, Indiana was broken. That's what, the only run they needed. And it was just a feel-good win. We still own Indiana. Always good to see. They 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 went full cope on Twitter. Even better to see. And yeah, great. Oh, it was it was the, the Twitter scenes were amazing. You but seen, I mean, I, I went as a fan, and uh, the Indiana fans were running out of the stadium. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> I mean, it it really is crazy though, because you know this is an Indiana team that you know it's probably the best team that they've had in years. They they were predicted preseason. I think they were like number ten, number eleven in the preseason. One in the Big Ten. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They were predicted to win the Big Ten. Trace Jackson <laughs> Davis was a guy who. And still absolutely could win National Player of the Year. Miller Kopp is getting more minutes, becoming more of a shooter. He was uh, the only Thompson, reason they were in the game. You know, I mean, they have a lot of guys who can like potentially like be stars like on different nights. But just against Rutgers, they really just could not figure it out, which is, you know, I don't know. It's got to be more heartening for Rutgers than it is disheartening for Indiana. For especially, sure. Especially after Miami, when, you know, Miami was kind of a lost opportunity. They were up big in that game in the second half. And they ultimately couldn't get it done, but you know they, they have a big week coming up, and you know it's a good way to start it with a big W like that. Ten and three in Jersey Mike's arena against ranked opponents since 2019. That's like take out two of the losses because two of them were without fans. Yeah, exactly. So that's you know te- that that's that's remarkable. That's really there's really no I would be, you know I don't have the number right now in front of me, but I'll be hard pressed to find a better ranked record in your home arena. Than Rutgers does, and you have to remember, Rutgers, other than that 2020 2021 season, weren't really ranked. And even in that 2020 2021 season, that COVID season, they were only ranked for about three weeks. They were ranked like in the early they were like part of the season. In so, the beginning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. So they could potentially, I mean, maybe there's one team better, I don't really know, but there's definitely not a lot. There's definitely a handful of teams that have ranked that many ranked wins and that few ranked losses in those three years. And they're not even ranked most of the time. So this is a fortress. And I, I truly believe it's the hardest place to play in college basketball. Like, I, I, straight up. And it, it gives me great pride to say that. Obviously, maybe a little biased. I'm a Rockers fan, not only a Rockers beat writer, but, you know. Well, you can listen to, you can listen to, to the, the, like, players. The, the players. Hunter like, Dickens literally said on the Round podcast, there's an Egyptian curse on the rim. I don't know if you guys heard that. 
he said that on that man. It's like they're like, of course Indiana lost to Jersey Mike Serena. So I mean, well, Indiana just well. loses to Rutgers in general. Let, let alone if it's Jersey Mike Serena, or it's in Indiana. I mean, but, it, it's been so normalized that they didn't even storm the court for beating a top, a top ten, 10 team in the win. I mean, and like they didn't even storm the court. Yeah, I texted it was like, couple, we expected it. Like, I texted a couple of my friends. I was like, go get on the court, and then I was like, oh, well, I, I, I guess, I guess it makes sense. That's yeah. what we do now. It's, in, it's no longer for excitement, but you know, big week coming up. Big three game stretch. So I'd even say week and a half, uh, and then they get a little break to buy. No games ever buy games, but buy games. But they've got first starting up. They've got uh, Ohio State Thursday. Ohio State, very good team. They're ranked number twenty five. In Columbus, young, young team in Columbus. With a bu- in Columbus, well, that's what they say. With a bunch of scores in Columbus and Rockers. You know, they played a. a I don't think they've beaten them. Ohio State in Columbus. I don't think so either. But I want to see more composure from them because. Miami was is a very good team. They'll probably be ranked soon. There's no there's no shame in losing. They'll be to a Miami. tournament team. There's no shame in losing to Miami. It's just I think why all of us were upset and all fans were upset was the way they did it. They were dominating in Miami and they blew it at the end due to lack of composure. They don't. I don't think they need to necessarily beat Ohio State, but I want them to show more composure in a way. Then they got seen all at home. They got to win that game. I'm most confident they'll win that game. Seton Hall doesn't look great this I'm year. I'm calling that game for WRSU. They're going to win that game. Yeah, they're going to win that game. They're going to win that game. Um, then I'm calling the next game for WRSU, Wake Forest. You know, another game, it's a little deceiving. It is home. But Wake Forest, is they can shoot threes really well, and they were well coached under Steve Forbes. They're an ACC um, team, too. Tyler, ACC, ACC teams play a lot differently than Big Ten teams. We saw it in the NCAA tournament yeah. last year and when we played Ty- Notre Dame. Tyler Appleby's been really good for them. Their point guard just scored 32 points. So that's a bit of a trap game, but you know if they can pull off, the, they don't need to win it against Ohio State. I just want them to show composure, and they win against Seton Hall and Wake Forest. They're in a good. I wouldn't say they're in a great position, but they're in I, a good position to make. Oh, they're, they're beating Wake Forest. That's, that's my twenty third birthday. They're, they're beating Wake Forest. All right, well, I want them. them. The next, the next two home games are cosmically there. Rutgers has to win both of them. I want them to win the Ohio State game. I think they're more than capable. I mean, I was doing some research on Ohio State's team. They they start. They don't. They don't start. They play four freshmen in the rotation. They start two of them. Like that's just for an experienced team like Rutgers, like a team that has good mix of veterans and young guys, as opposed to an Ohio State team that's kind of more reliant on those freshmen. I think they have a good opportunity to kind of you know welcome them to Big Ten basketball. This is their first Big Ten game, by the way. Yeah. Ohio State. This is their first Big Ten yeah. game. First Big Ten game for, for the guys like Bryce Sensabaugh, Bruce Thornton. Um, I forgot the other guys' names, uh, but Roddy Gale Jr. <clears throat> yeah, guys, guys that really haven't been acclimated to the Big Ten game. They haven't played a Big Ten game yet, so I mean, I think there's a good opportunity there to, you know, welcome them, to, welcome them to the stage. I know that Ohio State's got some uh, veterans as well, but the issue is for that game is you know, really Ohio State. Their strength is they're they're a similar team to Miami. I would almost say even just a little better version of Miami. They've just got great ISO scores, especially the freshmen, and you know, like Isaiah Wong. So they're a bit bigger than Bruce Thornton and Roddy Gale Jr. and Bryce Sesson ball, but they can shoot the three or they can just drive in and lay it, take a hard layup. So it's going to be hard for Rutgers to deal with. And when you have teams like that, you can – Rutgers' defense is set up well to de- defend teams like that, especially freshman teams like that. At the same time, a similar thing that can happen against Miami in that they just implode. You can't implode against a team like Ohio State – Against the team, uh, no way. You're not, you're not going to beat a team like Ohio State if you implode for over five minutes, like they yes. did it against Miami, especially yes. away. I just, I, again, I don't want to see a five minute stretch where they can't score the basket and they're just, they're all of a sudden bound in defense. They just got to stay composed in away matchups, which has been Rutgers' problem under Peichel for a long time. I, I'm a huge supporter of Steve Peichel more than most, but that that's, that's really been his one flaw away teams. Well, it's really hard to win on the road. In it college. is that too. It is hard. It, it really is, and I can't discount I, that. I think the biggest part too is like you know we all become architectural experts when we talk about Jersey Mike's <laughs> and the way it's built and the way it like traps sound. But having that fan advantage like is such a big like advantage. I also think that it's such a big disadvantage when you go away from that. It's I think kind of it, it. It almost becomes like like un unnatural. It's like yeah. walking into the unnatural way. That's why even in like neutral site games like. I remember they played, I want to say, St. Bonaventure in upper upstate New York, maybe Canada, like a year ago. They didn't play very well, like, and they lost. Temple, they lost, you know, and I think those are two teams that Rutgers was better than at the time. But ultimately, you know, for some reason, and I think that's part of it, they have trouble winning away. And I think, I think that when Peichel, you know, like, gets higher, 
star recruits. Not that not to say anything like yeah. uh, the team now, but I think getting guys that are inherently more talented will kind of like play into that a little bit better. I think having guys that can you know kind of do it night in and night and out, Gavin. and guys that are like Gavin Griffiths, yeah, and like Derek Simpson, because I think Derek Simpson he was a three star. I think he's gonna play way above that. I mean we we've, we've seen it already. But when you have guys that are inherently more talented, they can get it done day in and day out. And I think that's going to play into part of it. I mean, we'll see. If this team does better on the road than the last couple of years, then I think it's a big stepping stone for the next couple of years. For sure. And on that note, I kind of want to end off on this point, at least for the basketball, for my end, is that this road game is a big opportunity. Because, and again, I want to preface this by saying they don't need to win it. They, don't, they really don't need to win it. But if they do win it, per se... I think you're being seen Hall. I think you're being Wake Forest. You can't discount those games. But now you're looking at a team that's nine and two, two and zero oh in conference, and two two top fifteen wins. And I think they're going to be ranked in the, if, if this all happens. Yeah, I, I think they'd be ranked in the top twenty. I, but Ohio State's a big ask, so it's not like we're not. I'm not glossing over it. I'm just saying there's a real opportunity to because Rutgers is always the scrappy team around the rankings these last couple of years. Not discount anything away from them for that, but. <laughs> You, you you have that number eighteen and number seventeen mark. It's a good it's a good look to have as a fan. So something to keep your eye on. So end off this men's basketball conversation. Predictions for these two games. How if we're sitting here on Monday, what are what are we looking at? We're we looking at a two and zero weekend, or are we looking at a one and one weekend, zero and two weekend. I'll be optimistic, and I'll say Ohio State's lack lack of experience uh, does them in against a. Uh, aggressively defensive team in Rutgers, a team that rebounds very well. And I think they're better than Seton Hall. Sorry, Shane Holloway. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to say 2-0 Rutgers this weekend. I'm going to agree with you. Like, I, I usually err on the side of caution with these predictions, but I really whoa, do whoa, think... Let, hold on. You were doing football predictions all year that, do, that did not err on the side of caution. You were predicting kickers kicking it off the right upright to win the game. You were predicting interceptions with three seconds left. So let's, let's, not, let's not go with that. Proceed with caution. You know, I want to see the real Jack prediction. Who's hitting a buzzer beater? Who's dropping thirty and twelve? You know, you know. Come on. All right, all right. Before I say that, though, before, <laughs> before, I, before I get to that, uh, I really do think that we can go two and zero here this weekend. Like, I think Ohio State's lack of experience in playing four freshmen in their first Big Ten game of the year is going to not bode well against a team like Rutgers, that is the definition of a Big Ten team, in my opinion. Like, yeah. they, one hundred percent. I think they're the definition of a Big Ten team. And I, I really do think we got a great chance to win that game. And and then Sunday against Seton Hall, I mean that place, that place is gonna be going bonkers on Sunday. Like I can't wait. It's gonna be going. It's gonna be. be it's gonna be one of the best atmospheres of the season. Like if not the best atmosphere, I think people are gonna be really amped up for it because we haven't had a Rutgers versus Seton Hall game at Jersey Mike's Arena in a while. In three years since before that. Uh, since before that. That, uh, that yeah, that good thing that happened in 2020. So. And you know, Seton Hall kind of kind of stole a game from under us in that uh, in their, that renegotiation of the series that when it almost died, Seton Hall wanted that home game, and yeah, you know, there's certain thoughts about that. But we got it back at we got it back around campus uh, here on Sunday, so I think we pull out that game. It would in uh in pretty I wouldn't I wouldn't say convincing fashion. I think it's a nice Indiana, it won't be a nice Indiana nine, style. It won't be a nineteen to two run like we had the last. I think time it's going to be. I will disagree with you actually. So I actually have them. Yeah, Ellis, well, we got to wrap this up. I have them blowing it to Ohio State. I think Ohio State does win. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't, I'm not going to predict them to win away until I see it. But I think they beat we seen Hall by more than 20. I think it's going to be wow. demoralizing. I don't like the Seton Hall team. I really don't. I don't um, think Seton Hall. So I think I don't gonna, like Seton Hall fans. Like, Seton Hall like fans them. will be sprinting down the 300s if that happens. I don't like them personally, 20. but uh, I think they're an okay team. No, I, I actually don't. I don't. I don't think they're great. I think Rutgers matches up really well with them. Unlike last year, I think they win by 20. Okay. Fair enough. Well, that concludes our men's basketball conversation. We're going to swap out Ellis for our other next sports editor, Mr. Josh Myers, to talk. This is, this oh, is, by the way, Josh, how are we doing today? How are we the doing? The show is developing and developing. We've never had a mid, uh, mid-episode mid switch before. Yeah, mid-episode never switch. Had the never, had, never had the TV, too. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I was, I was getting too into the, my predictions. Josh, welcome to the show. Um, we're here to talk some NFL and... I I am I would be remiss to admit that you are an Eagles fan, and yes. it, it yeah, burns we, we do me. not it, like it. Burns me, Wait, burns me inside. First, I just want to introduce myself. I think this is my first time on the uh, the highly touted Keeping Score podcast. Highly touted. Highly touted. Highly touted. Uh, very award winning. Award winning. Award winning. Multi award winning. Emmy Emmy winning as well. I heard. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but Oscar ha- winning, you know, all that good stuff. Very happy to be here. Um, and yeah, like you said, I'm an Eagles fan. Uh, if, if you guys didn't know, I'm an Eagles fan. Ugh. Uh, Super yeah. Bowl 52 champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Just <laughs> Alice, you want to come back in now? Uh. Nah, um, I mean, obviously, I'll start off with the Eagles. I mean, that was a dominating win. Uh, all, three fa- all three facets of the game. Offense, defense, special teams. Big win. A.J. Brown going off against his former team. Just, just. But we're goosebumps. representing three fourths of the NFC East yeah, right true. now here. Seventy five percent of the NFC. All East. three of the NFC East teams that are currently in playoff mm. contention are in this room right now. Only one of them tied on Sunday, though. I was, I was there. You were in the I building. I witnessed, <laughs> I witnessed a tie, an NFL tie in person, which was pretty. How does cool. it feel? The New York Times. Honestly, at the to- at the time, like I was obviously like very mad because I think the Giants had. Multiple instances where they could have won that game. They had a taunting penalty with like six minutes left. They're on the thirty, which wasn't taunting. Dude was literally flexing on his own wide receiver, but whatever. Um, then in overtime, you know, obviously, he had a couple opportunities, but it's better than a loss. Uh, we're still in playoff contention, and I mean, you know, a lot of positives from that game. The defense played pretty well. Uh, Daniel Jones continues to, you know, not turn the ball over, which is, you know, more. I mean, he had a fumble before I got in the stadium. But other than that, he didn't really turn the ball over. And you met David Tyree. And I did meet Mr. Helmet Catch himself, David Tyree. Catch. David Tyree, if you're cool. listening to this, he's your biggest fan. Yes, yes, big fan. Uh, super nice guy. Also, uh, give us give us uh, a donation to keep him score, please. Or the Daily Target. <laughs> that, would be, that would be helpful. Yeah. We are an independent newspaper. We so. are an independent newspaper. But, yeah, you know, I, I think I think it's going to be tough. I mean, obviously, uh, Giants-Eagles this week, you know, uh, mo- uh, nine times out of ten, the Eagles are going to win that game. You know, I'm not here to convince you otherwise, but I'm hoping that Sunday is going to be the one time out of ten. And then, you know, you got Washington next week on Sunday Night Football. Uh, if you would have asked me if the Giants would have been playing a meaningful football game in December on Sunday Night Football this year, I would have said, no, I think you need to get yourself checked out. That's crazy, but they are, and it's really exciting. You know, I really, at this point, I think that there's enough bad teams in the NFC that they can make a wild card spot. I don't see why they couldn't. They win two of their next five, I think they're in. And that leads us to the one team that everyone wants to talk about, for better or worse. Uh, just get it over with. America's dude. team, the Dallas Cowboys, won by... 35 points against the Indianapolis you Colts. All, the it's the Colts. It's the you Colts, realize the, the only reason they're called America's team is that they won, like, five championships before, like, your parents even thought about, like, having you? Like, yeah. That's how long but, ago they won. Dude, like, three we also had 49 people, 49 million people watch us on Thanksgiving. Great. Three million? What, wait, what? It was By three, the way, I don't know why you're saying it was the Colts. You guys, like, barely escaped, and Nick Sirianni no, no, looked you're like right, Pat- you're right, that that Nick Sirianni looked like Patrick right, but, Beverly on the sidelines okay, when they okay, won the play. Okay, fair. And, like, I, I, I told Jack, you know, Cowboys looked really good that game, but I just don't know how Jack can sit here and tell me that the Cowboys are better than the Eagles right now. It's because he's can't. delusional. You I never can't. really said. I never really said that. I just people. I think. No, people, you definitely, you definitely feel it. I, I do. I do feel feelings, good. Jack? I do feel good about our team right now. Okay, so there I don't know. I don't know who's better because when we both played each other, like Cooper Rush was in there. Like Cooper yeah, Rush also, is not him. Your team might also rip my heart out in a couple weeks if they decide to sign a certain free agent wide receiver. Did you see the news today though? He might he might not be able to play till like mid January. I did see that. So. Uh that would break. I mean, either way, that would absolutely break my heart and tear into a million pieces. Odell Beckham Jr., oh. who I watched <laughs> become one of the best receivers in the first three seasons of his career in the history of the NFL. So okay, and then yeah, if you're watching, uh, come to Philly. Josh, no, come to New York. Come back. Come <laughs> As an Eagles fan, what scares you about the Cowboys? Don't say nothing. You can't say nothing scares you about a nine and three team. No, I like I like I told you like that. You guys have some good players. Like see, like I said, C D Lamb, Tony Pollard, like they're really good. I think that, I think those two running backs are really good. Obviously Zeke has always been a good running back. I just don't think like Jalen Hurts. Like I told you before, Jalen Hurts. I'd rather have him over Dak Prescott. Wow, like, a thousand percent. Well, well I'd rather have Dak J- Prescott Jaylen over Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts so. is the MVP right now. I this is unbiased. That was a pretty crazy performance on Sunday. This is unbiased. 380 it's yards, unbiased. like that's after, pretty crazy. After, after rushing for 360 yards, the Eagles passed for 380 yards. I mean, come on, that's, that's okay, just well, the makings of a good if team. You, if you think Jalen Hurts is really good or and is better than Dak Prescott, what about the running back room? What about the offensive line? What about the receiving core? What about the defense? How do they stack up against the Cowboys? This is not just a quarterback game. I think our, I mean, our defense, I think, is probably better. 
I think our defense is I really would, good. Not would, your front seven. I would disagree. Not your front seven. Maybe not our front seven. Our secondary is getting a little weak. Is our, secondary, but but our, second, our secondary is... As someone who like firmly understands and respects the Giants as their best team in that division, the Eagles do not have a better defense than Dallas. I, but our secondary is we have the best. Great. We have the best player in the game. In that game. like If the Eagles and Cowboys were to play, we have the best player in that game. Michael Parsons. I agree. It, defensively, I agree. Yeah, no, he, no he's good. He's good. Yeah. You can't really say that because, like, in basketball, you could say in a playoff series, like, okay, the Warriors and Suns are playing. Like, the Warriors have the best player in that series. But, like, that's what the I'm Warriors trying to say. The Warriors don't have DeAndre Eaton. Like, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Warriors don't have campaign, like you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Come on, man. Yeah, but like in that game, Eagles versus Cowboys, if you stacked everyone up, Michael Parsons the no, best player. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game. That's what it's not on Christmas, Christmas Eve. This is this is That's gonna be a good this game. This is a sure. depressing conversation for me because it's like, yeah, you know, the Eagles and Cowboys just worry about each other, and then if they have to deal with the Giants, they'll deal with the well, Giants. Well, next week is a big game. I'm actually going to the Eagles Giants game. Well, what time's the game? At? Be safe. That's a one, one o'clock. o'clock. My dad and I were like worried because um, my dad's coming up to pick me up, and we're going to the game. And he was like, he would, he like sent me a text like, oh no, might get flexed, because like he would like be like screwed for work the next day because he'd have to drive back. But um, luckily it's still at one. Um, first time going to MetLife, so that should be fun. It's fun. We're we're much nicer than your fans in Philadelphia, <laughs> so uh, you won't get anything stolen. You won't get assaulted. You no, know, uh, no, uh, there's no there's no, no snowballs or batteries being thrown. There's at no you. court in our stadium, so uh, you know that, no that court? really no court court. Yeah, I don't know if there's one in Lincoln Financial. There was one in Veterans though. There used to be like a literal court and jail. Yeah, because that when I was Philly's stadium too. Oh, yeah. that's what you meant. I thought you meant like a basketball I was so court. Confused. No, no, like like a court of law. <laughs> Have you guys had um uh, <laughs> like we've had Winter Classic, like we've had um we've had like a hockey rink inside. No, MetLife is a billion dollar stadium. Right, so we're, we're just about, better because like, hockey's a good sport. MetLife's a billion dollar stadium. It's probably worth about. I've said this. I've said this a million nasty. times. I think the only thing MetLife has going for it is that it's across the river from the most important, from the like most famous city in the world, or like, best city in the, world. the best city in the world. Yeah, New York City. I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, MetLife's pretty mid. Uh, yeah, but that's the only reason why it's like being considered for the World Cup final in four years. But all three of our teams are gonna make the playoffs. So no argument there, no debate whatsoever. And that'll do it for today. Join us next time on Keeping Score for more sports recaps, and be sure to join the daily. T- be sure to follow the daily target on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more content.